hello students today we learn that how a nozzle works and when a compressible fluid flows through the nozzle means the behavior of compressible fluid when it flows through a nozzle first of all nozzle is a device which increases the velocity of fluid in expense of energy drop of fluid so one form of energy drops and on the expense of that the velocity of fluid increases because velocity increment means what kinetic energy increment so energy is conserved so in case one energy is dropping then the kinetic energy of fluid is increasing like that for the case of incompressible fluid the energy content is talked in terms of head of fluid okay so for the case of incompressible fluids those are liquids the head of fluid drops inside the nozzle and on account of that the velocity of fluid increases but for the case of compressible fluid compressible fluids are those which can be compressed by application of pressure their volume can be changed by uh, applying pressure or by relieving the pressure so for compressible fluids the energy is talked in terms of enthalpy so enthalpy drops and on account of that the kinetic energy increases so enthalpy drops and kinetic energy of fluid increases for the case of compressible fluids in case it is flowing through a nozzle now this is a picture of a converging nozzle converging nozzle is that in which there is a converging duct at the inlet where the fluid is entering is having higher uh, magnitude of cross section area and at the outlet the cross section area is less we can see that a a1 is greater than a2 like this now what is continuity equation continuity equation says that under steady flow condition now what is steady flow condition steady flow condition means that whatever mass of fluid is entering inside the nozzle is equals to the mass of fluid coming outside the, out the nozzle per unit time for example in case 3 kg per second is the flow rate while entrance when the uh, fluid is entering inside then the suppose the mass flow rate is 3 kg per second the same mass flow rate would be there when it is exiting the nozzle so under a steady flow the rho1 a1 c1 the product of rho ac rho1 is the density of the fluid at the entrance a1 is the cross section area at the entrance and c1 is the velocity so rho1 a1 c1 is exactly equal to the same at the exit means at the exit rho2 is the density and a2 is the cross section area at exit and c2 is the velocity how this can be understood by this example suppose there is a hole or orifice through which some fluid is coming out with velocity c okay some fluid jet we know that the cross sectional area of this jet will be exactly same to the cross sectional area of this hole see when we use a toothpaste and we squeeze the toothpaste the toothpaste which comes out from the exit of the toothpaste tube is having the same cross section area as the cross section area of the hole of the toothpaste tube so same thing over here the jet this jet is coming out the cross section area of this jet is exactly equal to the uh, cross section area of the hole through which this jet is coming out now velocity is c so it means c length of jet will come out in one second we know that volume is defined by area of base into length so a into c is the volume of fluid coming out in one second through this hole because c is per second so in one second c uh, length of fluid jet will come out so c into a, a cross section area of the base is the volume so c into a is the volume of fluid which is coming out from this hole in case we multiply it with the density of fluid we know that mass upon volume is what density so in case volume is multiplied with the density this is what mass is so rho ac determines the mass of fluid jet which is coming out from this orifice so same over here over point 1 rho 1 a1 c1 will determine per second how much mass is entering inside and rho 2 a2 ct will determine how much mass flow rate is there over the exit so under steady flow we know that mass flow rate going inside is exactly equal to mass flow rate coming outside so rho 1 a1 c1 must be equals to rho 2 a2 c2 this is called as equation of continuity now we know equation of continuity is rho 1 a1 c1 equals to rho 2 a2 c2 it means rho ac is constant in the flow now in case we differentiate both lhs and rhs with respect to some arbitrary variable y then lhs would be this 
ए सी डी रो बाई डी वाई प्लस ए रो डी सी बाई डी वाई प्लस रो सी डी ए बाई डी वाई इक्वल टू जीरो बिकॉज एम इज कॉन्स्टेंट सो डी एम इज जीरो सो देर फोर नो ओवर द आर एच एस इट वुड बी जीरो नाउ डी वाई कैन बी टेकन कॉमन ओवर द डिनोमीटर इट विल गो टू द आर एच एस एंड इट विल ऑल्सो बिकम जीरो बाई मल्टीपाई जीरो सो अल्टीमेटली वी आर गेटिंग दिस ए सी डी रो प्लस ए रो डी सी प्लस रो सी डी एक्वल टू जीरो नाउ इन केस बोथ द साइड्स आर डिवाइडेड बाय रो ए सी वॉट वी we will get uh, over the denominator in case we are putting row ac ac will cancel out ac ultimately row will be left so d row by row similarly over here also in case divided by row ac we will get dc by c as here also in case dividing by the row ac we will get get da by a so this is another form of continuity equation which is differential form of continuity equation for a steady flow so for the case of nozzle in which steady flow is happening d rho by rho plus dc by c plus da by a would be zero now let's understand what is local mach number in a compressor flow we know that when sound propagates then it is always having some speed so in case the sound is propagating in a compressible fluid then speed of sound at a point is given by root gamma rt denoted by a here gamma is the ratio of cp and cv r is the gas constant and t is the temperature in kelvin so this is one formula for the speed of sound in a compressible fluid and speed of sound is also given by root dp by d rho here dp is change in pressure at a particular point on the behalf of that d rho is the change in density over that point so this is another way to express the velocity of sound in a fluid this formula is applicable for compressible as well as incompressible fluid but this formula is particularly for compressible fluid because gamma corresponds to only compressible fluid now what is local mach number local mach number is defined as at a particular see suppose some fluid is flowing like this suppose this some compressible fluid which is flowing then at a particular point suppose we are talking about particular point 1 suppose the velocity of fluid is c1 at that point and that point itself the temperature is t1 then the velocity of fluid at that point upon the velocity of sound at that point is what the local mach number at that point 1 so over here in case temperature is t1 so velocity of sound at that point is a1 equals to root gamma rt1 so c1 upon root gamma rt1 is the mach number generally denoted by capital m so mach number local mach number at that point because mach number is defined as at a particular point local mach number is defined at defined as speed of fluid at that point upon the speed of sound at th uh, that particular point suppose we are choosing point 2 over there suppose temperature is t2 in that case m2 would be c2 is the velocity over there so c2 upon root gamma rt2 velocity of fluid at that point upon velocity of sound at that point is the local mach number at point 2 so now we are aware about what is local mach number in a compressible flow now here <coughs> we will learn the types of nozzles which are used for a compressible flow this is a converging nozzle this is a diverging nozzle and this is a converging diverging nozzle now what is a converging nozzle converging nozzle is the one in which there is gradual decrement in the cross sectional area of the duct through which fluid is flowing diverging nozzle is the one there is in which there is gradual increment in the cross sectional area of the duct through which fluid is flowing and converging diverging is the one in which initially the cross sectional area decreases and then again it starts increasing so first the uh, duct is converging and then again it is diverging okay so three types of nozzles are there in regards of a compressible flow now for converging nozzle in case some compressible fluid is flowing then remember that in case the fluid is entering with mach number less than 1 mach number less than 1 is called as a subsonic flow so in case mach number of fluid which is entering inside a converging nozzle is having value less than 1 then over the exit the maximum mach number i am talking about local mach number 
over the exit the maximum number uh, mac number can be 1 remember so in case a subsonic flow is entering inside a converging nozzle then over the exit the maximum velocity would be the sonic flow so a converging nozzle can convert a subsonic flow into sonic flow now in case we want to go beyond mac number 1 in that case we have to use a diverging nozzle so diverging nozzle is used for the case the fluid is already entering with mac number 1 and we want over the exit the fluid outcome with mac number greater than 1 so a diverging nozzle can convert a sonic flow into supersonic flow because mac number greater than 1 is called as supersonic flow remember mac number less than 1 called as subsonic flow mac number equals to 1 called as sonic flow and mac number greater than 1 called as supersonic flow got it now in case we want to convert a subsonic flow into supersonic flow so first of all we have to make it sonic and then we can go to supersonic how first of all by the help of converging nozzle we can convert the uh, son, uh, subsonic flow into sonic flow then once it reaches reaches mac number 1 therefore beyond mac number 1 in case we want to raise the velocity then we have to use a diverging nozzle so converging and diverging both are combined in this nozzle called as converging diverging nozzle so converging diverging nozzle is particularly used in case we want to accelerate the fluid from subsonic levels to supersonic level but how why this is happening for compressive flow it could be understood by this mathematical derivation we know that nozzle increases the kinetic energy of fluid on the behalf of enthalpy drop so suppose over the inlet the uh, enthalpy of fluid is h1 and over the outlet it is h2 so enthalpy drop h1 minus h2 one en uh, energy content is dropping is equals to the raise in kinetic energy c2 square by 2 and c1 is minus c1 square over 2 c1 is the velocity by which the fluid is entering inside and c2 is coming outside so this is the change in kinetic energy per unit mass per unit mass flow rate and this is change in enthalpy per unit mass flow rate now we can arrange this equation like this h1 plus c1 square by 2 equals to h2 plus c2 square by 2 equals to suppose h plus c square by 2 because this is equals to this so therefore we can take that the addition of enthalpy and kinetic energy throughout the flow is a constant so in general we can write it as h plus c square by 2 equals to k so further we can write it like this that k minus h equals to c square by 2 now both the sides in case differentiated with respect to c what we will get minus dh by c, dc equals to only c because c square as differentiation is 2c 2c by 2 is c like this so dh can be written as minus c dc okay so this is equation 1 we also know that h is given by u plus pv here u is the internal energy p is the pressure and v is the specific volume so in case doing dh by du both the sides what we will get for u it is 1 differentiation of u with uh, dh by du for u itself would be 1 plus p dv by du plus v dp by du now multiplying this equation with du both the sides what we will get dh equals to du plus pdv because du will be cancelled out plus vdp here also du will be cancelled out but with one when du is multiplied it is only du we know that for the case uh, this du plus pdv by first law of thermodynamics is what del q del q equals to du plus pdv we know this thing that for the case of nozzle there is no del q because we don't add any heat to nozzle or take out any heat from the nozzle so therefore du plus pdv for the case of nozzle can be taken as zero so ultimately one more equation we are getting dh equals to vdp only because du plus pdv is zero for the case of nozzle now equation 1 is dh equals to minus cdc and equation 2 is dh equals to vdp now comparing these two equations what we will get minus cdc equals to vdp now multiplying both the sides by minus 1 by c square we will get dc by c equals to minus v dp by c square which can be written as dp by rho c square because v over here is the specific volume and inverse of specific volume is what density so uh, and density is uh, inverse of density is what is volume so in place of this v we can also write 1 by rho 
now in case we keep the value of dc by c that is equals to minus dp by rho c square in the equation of continuity in differential form in differential form the equation of continuity is dc by c plus d rho by rho plus da by a equals to zero so in place of dc by c we can write minus dp by rho c square so that is kept over here now keeping da by a over the lhs and taking all the rest of the expression to the rhs we are getting this da by a equals to dp by rho c square minus d rho by o because this is uh, having positive sign over the rhs and this would have negative so it is like this in case i am taking dp by rho c square common out of these two expressions then i will get inside the bracket 1 minus d rho c square upon dp we know that root dp by d rho is given by uh, is equals to the velocity of sound so d rho by dp will be what root t rho by dv will be 1 by a and d rho by dp would be what 1 by a square so over here what is there d rho by dp so in place of d rho by dp by this expression we can keep it as 1 by rho a square so c square by a square we will get we know that velocity this is what the velocity of the fluid upon velocity of sound so this is what mach number is so ultimately we are getting da by a equals to dp by rho c square in the bracket inside 1 minus m square so this can be further arranged as dp by da equals to rho c square upon a into 1 minus m square this is an important conclusion how we can understand it like this ultimately we are getting this expression okay now in case we know that density cannot be negative c square can also not be negative and area can also not be negative so this expression dp by da is negative or positive depends upon only the mach number in case m is greater than 1 over here then dp by da would be negative it means dp equals to minus da now what happens that in a nozzle the pressure decreases and the velocity increases remember that when a fluid expands in a nozzle then enthalpy decreases as well as the pressure also decreases so p2 minus p1 must always be negative remember so dp must always be negative in case we want to increase the velocity of the fluid because velocity increases and enthalpy as well as pressure decreases in case we want to accelerate the fluid therefore dp must always be negative in the flow okay now minus da we know that da equals to what a2 minus a1 a2 minus a1 in case is positive then only this minus da can be negative because see a2 is greater than a1 then only this number will come out positive and negative is outside so positive into negative it will become negative therefore a2 must be greater than a1 to keep this expression positive so for the case mach number is greater than 1 the area must be diverging means a2 must be greater than a1 once again because dp must always be negative so over the rhs there must be some negative value da is a2 minus a1 so in case a2 minus a1 is positive then only the negative sign can make it negative so for a2 minus a1 to be positive a2 must be greater than a1 so this is the reason that beyond mach number one the cross sectional area of the nozzle must be increasing to accelerate the fluid beyond mach number one so this is what the theory for the case of nozzle so remember once again that a converging nozzle can change a subsonic flow into sonic flow in case we want still increment in velocity then we have to use a diverging nozzle that is been proved by this entire mathematical analysis and converging diverging nozzle is used in case the fluid entering inside with subsonic speed and we want its outcome with supersonic speed and remember all this theory is in regards of only compressor flow we are not talking about incompressible flow in this uh, theory thank you